Namaste, you're on The Nation at 5. I'm Anand Narsimhan coming to you live from the newsroom here at CNN News 18. The Mengluru, the Coimbatore blast and followed by what's happened in Mengluru has blown the lid off rising radicalism and that is largely ISIS inspired in the south of our country. But more importantly, in Karnataka, questions are being raised. Even as connections are being drawn, the antecedents of Sharik uh, is being uh, very clearly being explored. And the investigation is being uh, conducted at a faster pace, even as the state government looks at bringing in the NIA, because there could be a multi-state dimension to it. ...taking on the current uh, Chief Minister Basavraj Bommai and going out to... On, uh, and expressing on the social media platform come publishing house Twitter that uh, this is perhaps a result of intelligence failure on the behalf of the State Department and the State Home Department. The State Home Minister Araga Janendra should actually take responsibility. Basavraj Bombay hitting back saying that similar incidents happened during Siddharamai's tenure and the focus of the state is currently on the investigation and not playing politics. ಮಂತ್ರಿಗಳು and investigations into the antecedents and the antecedents and the movements of Shariq, top intelligence sources telling CNN News 18 that Shariq was indeed a lone wolf. This could be considered as perhaps one of the first lone wolf attacks that have happened, uh, which are purely ISIS-inspired lone wolf attacks that have taken place on Indian soil. This is what top intelligence sources are telling uh, CNN News 18 via our investigations editor Manoj Gupta and uh, Sharif was operating as a lone wolf and that all previous information about associates is still under uh, is being investigated or perhaps now under on multiple establishments. He was not fidaeen or did not have suicide tendencies. He wanted to conduct these blasts himself, give it, uh, uh, orchestrate them and give them purpose. That's what, and he was highly radicalized. He gathered material for terror plots himself. Sharik did not operate as a suicide bomber. He was not in touch with any gang or any other similar ISIS-inspired module. He was operating on his own. The probe continues into Sharik's associations, but one aspect that stands out is that he was highly, highly radicalized. An engineering student himself, uh, Ritu uh, of News 18, has gone down to Shivamoga because uh, Sharik hails from Shivamoga. This entire incident was in Shivamoga. There were clashes, and thereafter there was a death. And then the blasts on the banks of the Tungabhadra, where two were arrested, one had escaped, and that person was Sharik himself. So all these details have come forth. And uh, Sharitu is now trying to tell us how Sharik and Mateen Taha, they were living very close to each other. any kind of the connection with him he has never tried calling his parents to see whether how they are uh, also uh, you know how their condition is because both of them also happens to be very old what we do know is the mother is inside now but the uh, father uh, you know says that it is all now that the police had taken up they are uh, looking into it we too been in trying to find him from a long time now that whole uh, this whole incident from the Mangaluru blast comes into the light police is now searching especially the Arfat Ali uh, as well as the Abdul Mateen Ta because the alleged IS, IS, Al Hind, Bengaluru module case as well. But now the investigation is on and police is searching for both of them now. Ritu now joining us live. Uh, Ritu, the Shivamoga connection emerges. It all started and emanated from here and he spent some time uh, and then he moved to other cities too, including Hubli, Coimbatore, Mysuru. But he was in close contact with Abdul Mateen Taha. So see what happened. 
So yes, you see what uh, happened in the Shivmogga on August of 15, uh, where there was a clash. Uh, the crucial person for police that we can say, who had given a hint to the police that what was the role of uh, uh, the uh, uh, the Shakir uh, the Shakir also in this whole uh, uh, incident. But yes, now the police is trying to investigate this whole matter, trying to understand how he was further linked. But as you also said, that police is also saying the same thing that he was the mm. one who has learnt it on his own about the uh, preparation of this explosive, how to make them. All, but police says there might be a big, a big link also behind it, major people as well behind that because the house that is located, because we have reported as well to see how far they were right. staying. So that really re uh, plays a major role here also because the house of the Matinta is just 20 meters away from the uh, the accused of the Mangalore blast house, so Sharik's house, so also Majmuni's house is also just uh, 250 to 300 meters away from mm. that location of where they both are located. So this clearly states that how they were all in link as well and they were you know, in constantly touch also. While the Matin family is saying that they have not been in connection with him since 2019 after he uh, absconded, but yes, his uh, connection was still st uh, seen strongly with the, uh, Sharik, Yasin, Majmunir and Haseen and and also Arfat Ali as well. So this you know, mm. seems a very uh, a big, you know, this whole plan of what they had it and how they were planning mm. for a, uh, anything alleged big plans as well that they had it. So yes, now this the whole matter is under the investigation. Police will try to bring out more details after the, uh, once mm. they get to see the recovery of uh, uh, Sharik who is right now admitted in the hospital as he had sustained 45% of the burn injuries. Right. Now, Ritu, uh, uh, was, uh, does the Mateen family or Mateen Taha's family recognize Sharik? How long has Sharik been living in that area? The saying us on ground is that uh, yes, they were in touch in the uh, you know late uh, in the twenties as they were in because now Sharik, 24 year old, is also absconding in from a long time because he moved uh, uh, from here. After that, you see in the 2020 in the Mangalore graffiti case that he was been booked under UAPA. Since then, he was also absconding from his location. One, he does not have a, a father and the mother. He uh, has the uh, sister and the relatives. So yes, they too had lost a contact with. Uh, him for a long time. He was not constantly in touch with the family members. We do know that. So since 2020 is when the, they knew each other very well, the Maj Munir, uh, Sharik and uh, uh, also the uh, uh, Matin Ta as well. So say they all had a strong connection because Matin Ta is the one actually who is a uh, uh, main person. Hmm. Now the police is looking forward. He's the one who's been alleged of, accused of uh, uh, radicalizing these uh, other uh, accu uh, these other members also like the Maj Munir, Yasin, uh, Hussein and uh, uh, Sharik too. But Sarik happens to be very clever and intellectual uh, inter, uh, intelligent in that way that he really uh, started learning things on his own uh, but he was seeking the help of the uh, Arafat at how he was purchasing mm. few explosive materials online also and offline too it's the Matin Ta in fact who has also taught about the Bitcoin uh, 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 in a Bitcoin establishment mm. the Bitcoin business also uh, to the right. uh, Sharik too so that way that also shows that how close connection they all had it though they weren't in connection with the family members so there there are connections there is also the aspect of bitcoin or cryptocurrency that you're talking about ritu somewhere these people were in connect with each other but investigations agencies and intelligence agencies saying what they wanted to do that is again uh, a big question mark and we'll wait for more intelligence details or investigation details to surface ritu let's quickly go across to rashid kidwai and tushar gupta who are joining us this evening namaste gentlemen how would you see this rising instances of radicals or radicalism and that's ISIS inspired in the south of our country, Rashid ji? I think, uh, Anand, first and foremost, it's a very disturbing thing. And this is something mm. that requires a holistic approach. When I say holistic approach, mm. of course, law and order is, this. of course, there is no scope for failure. But we mm. should avoid this kind of uh, political tutu, meme, and blame game, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, the, mm. Present state government is responsible or not, or the previous government was, you know, sort of uh, responsible for it. That would not solve the purpose. And also, first mm. and foremost, we must need to have, you know, mm. anti, you know, uh, de-radicalization uh, programs in place uh, in mm. various states in consultation with the community leaders. Uh, I have written about it extensively, mm. and there is a need for, uh, you know, constant engagement. In some places mm. like in Maharashtra and all these radicalization programs, society, and we need to be very diligent about it. But the other aspect is that uh, uh, somewhere do you believe it's concerning that educated individuals are getting highly radicalized and that too with, uh, with, with a particular ideology 
which has been rejected largely by the Muslim world globally. Uh, why should there be ISIS-inspired radicals on Indian soil, Rashidji? And is that also not a concern which should be raised within the community, amongst the educated, amongst the intelligentsia and the scholars? Absolutely. I mean, uh, I don't know what is the actual, uh, you know, the exact kind of uh, uh, numbers, etc. But the fact of the matter is, that's what I'm saying. There is a need for holistic approach. Uh, there is no point, you know, pointing an accusing finger to a community or community leaders, etc. The real R is to, you know, identify who are the, you know, black sheep, who are the people who are uh, getting radicalized, who are the people who influence, what is the international connection. And a lot of it, uh, support is required from the government. A lot of support is required from within the community. So it has to work in tandem. So engagement is a key word. But how do we do this? Because uh, these are all pockets, the thing which is concerning. We don't want anybody to turn towards or, or get radicalized by modules uh, we, or, or a theology or an ideology which has been rejected by, the, uh, by, by humanity. So that, I'm, I'm sure you would have wanted to put a finger. Is, it cannot, you cannot blame it on politics. You cannot just blame it on political opposition. Somewhere something is triggering all of this, isn't it? Amongst those who have received modern education, you can't even turn around and say that they are at the hands of some rabid clerics inside madrasas where they are being perhaps brainwashed, as, as some people would say, or as has happening in some of the madrasas in some places. Not all of them, and I'll be very clear about it. But these are all engineering students, engineers. We have seen so this in Maharashtra. Understand also. modern education. Yeah, so we have seen this uh, getting radicalized or the educated people getting radicalized. Mm. Remember, technology is a very big avenue. I mean, technology plays all kind. Of, so there is a lone wolf. There is someone who, in, in his or her mind, you know, gets some kind of these ideas. So we can go on criticizing, but that's a different chapter. And mm. they, in the sense, they establish context. Sometimes I have known cases where parents do not know anything, friends do not know anything. I can do. That's what I'm saying. There is no easy solution. And Anand, we must not remember the entire world is actually, uh, you know, struggling to find a, you know, comprehensive response. You look at the states, countries like Correct. Australia. There also there See, are a lot the, of people the, are getting the, radicalized. You know, there are, there, are, there are challenges at various layers, Tushar, as I, as I bring you and thank you for your patience. One is, how do you stop them from being radicalized? Two, how do you stop the radicalized from further radicalizing others? Three, encrypted social media platforms and uh, which are giving you the right to privacy, but then they are also raising a huge threat to national security and also... Why are good students, young students who have graduated with engineering degrees, very technical subjects turning to radicalization, turning to get themselves inspired by something like the Islamic State? Now, what happens, mm. Anand, in the, you know, in our media narratives, a lot of channels, a lot of outlets, they keep peddling this narrative about the anti-minority sentiment. Every mm. second or third journalist will come up, oh, the CA is coming up, there is an anti-Muslim sentiment by the government. Oh, the hijab mm. debate is coming up, there is an anti-minority sentiment. Oh, there is mm. a ban on the PFI, there is anti-minority. So the vindication mm. for all these radicals come from this media narrative. And then there are right. people who give political cover fire. Anand, if you look closely, this is the same playbook in down south that was employed in Kashmir in the 90s and the 2000s. That there are a group of politicians aided by the media managers against themselves and now they carry out lone wolf terror attacks. Anand, probably it's on your show. We've been talking about the possibility of such attacks for such a long time now that this is the mm. threat we face because of the radicalized that has been ushered by the PFI. And today, unfortunately, it's a reality. So the first aspect is these are the people, some politicians. Right. Today we also have to look at punitive costs. Can the hmm. families who ignore the radicalization going on in their very homes be spared from the punishment anymore? Whoever Shakir hmm. was, whoever he was operating with, whoever he was living with, can they also be excused from the responsibility of what happened? Is that what we're looking at? So at some point, the state machinery, the law and order machinery has to start mm. thinking of punitive costs on the people who are around these radicals. Or otherwise, mm. we keep talking about surveillance, we keep talking about social media platforms. But other the bigger challenges, data, the information, so easy. It's even difficult for the government of the day to regulate it. So what do you do? You impose punitive mm. costs. If the family is not willing to inform, the local police station, that's what's going on. Most of the intelligence agencies, and count not getting into the political aspect of it, the intelligence agencies are saying we have the inputs that these people are involved or engaging with outfits or engaging in conversations which border on radical or that there is a cause for worry, cause for concern. But in a cause for concern or as preventive detention, you cannot hold a person indefinitely. 
you cannot stop them uh, from uh, getting bail or or uh, walking back out into the streets and then they uh, and if they decide to act and you are innocent until proven guilty so you may have an intelligence input which says an intelligence official say that they are highly radicalized but what have they done to in society for you to hold them back or uh, because still an act is committed you cannot uh, adjudge them a criminal so these are aspects which are something which we need to ponder and discuss at length rashid ji tushar ji please stay with me we got more inputs coming through and this is not from uh, the south but towards the northeast of our country from assam and again a hotbed for activity of the al qaeda inspired ansarullah agar police and uh, they have stated that uh, there are certain uh, allegations that he might have be involved with some kind of uh, terrorist activities basically he is a member of maybe ansarul bangla team for which he has been now in the police is being interrogated however earlier also in the month of june he was uh, interrogated by nia after which now again he has been picked up and we try to talk with the asp of noga rupjuti kalita who is actually leading this interrogation and uh, he has stated that uh, as of now they cannot uh, they are uh, they were he was also linked to a local madrasa however he was educated he has taken his education from a madrasa of lucknow but uh, there are also certain uh, 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 links uh, being said about uh, certain activities he was involved with a local madrasa in uh, nogaon right thank you for your inputs preeti uh, rashid kidwai and tushar please stay on with us we've got the other story that's become a political hot potato and uh, and and uh, it kicked up a huge storm in delhi with the uh, the massage that the aap minister has got from the hands of a poxo rape accused inside the tihar jail we come back with those pictures and the story after a very short break stay with us